Okay. Beginning again. For the record. Okay. State your name for the record, please. All right. My name is Pam Jones. You are here to give testimony today. Is that right? Yes, sir. That is right. You want to know about the accident. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. That is right. Okay. You have some notes there. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That is correct. That accident happened a long time ago. Okay. You wrote those notes after the accident happened. Is that correct? That's correct, sir. The police officer said I should because I was a witness. Do you remember the name of the police officer on duty at the time? No, sir. I don't remember much after the accident happened. Okay. Do you recall when the accident happened? I don't remember everything. I think it was June, but I don't know for sure. All right. You remember where the accident happened. Is that right? No, sir. I don't know if I have the street names. I can't remember that. That's okay. Do you recall if the officer sent you the accident report? Yes, sir. The police officer sent it. I don't remember when, though. To your knowledge, your testimony was in the report. Is that correct? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. I think he said he would include it, but I don't know. Oh, okay. To your knowledge, you were subpoenaed today? I think I was. I don't know for sure. I think it's a subpoena. Okay, we're going to repeat that. Ready? For the record. Okay, state your name for the record, please. All right, my name is Pam Jones. You are here to give testimony today, is that right? Yes, sir, that is right. You want to know about the accident, is that right? Yes, ma'am, that is right. Okay, you have some notes there, is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. That accident happened a long time ago. Okay, you wrote those notes after the accident happened, is that correct? That's correct, sir. The police officer said I should because I was a witness. Do you remember the name of the police officer on duty at the time? No, sir. I don't remember much after the accident happened. Okay. Do you recall when the accident happened? I don't remember everything. I think it was June, but I don't know for sure. All right. You remember where the accident happened. Is that right? No, sir. I don't know if I have the street names. I can't remember that. That's okay. Do you recall if the officer sent you the accident report? Yes, sir. The police officer sent it. I don't remember when, though. To your knowledge, your testimony was in the report. Is that correct? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. I think he said he would include it, but I don't know. Oh, okay. To your knowledge, you were subpoenaed today? I think I was. I don't know for sure. I think it's a subpoena. Okay, and then we will also do um, a section on the uh, phrases you said or said, phrases that end with said, which is BS on the end. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. So is everybody familiar with those? Yeah. Okay, here we go. For the record. Oh, we won't. Okay. For the record, you said you wanted to make the decision without unanimous consent. I said I didn't want to decide without the facts. Well, is that what you said to the plaintiff? I said what I said after he said he was going to sue me. You said you were not going to make the decision. That's exactly what I said. So the defendants were lying about what they said? What they said was not true. They made up things that we said. Who said the decision had to be unanimous? The plaintiff was the one who said that, and I said I wouldn't decide then. When you said that, what did the membership say? 
when I said that, they said it would have to be a unanimous decision. Did you say anything to the membership after they said that? I said the decision should be based on what we said before. And what you said before was what? We said the membership should decide by majority, not unanimous decision. Do you think they agreed when you said that? I don't think they cared what I said. Who said the decision should be a majority? The membership. They said they didn't have to listen to what I said. So, you said you wanted to end the relationship? That's what I said. They said I couldn't quit. What did the president say when you said you would quit? She said that the decision was not mine to make. When you said you would end your relationship with them, what happened? They said they would reconsider if I retracted what I said. And did you agree to retract what you said? I said that I would consider if, it, if they retracted what they said. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're going to repeat that. Speed it up a little bit. For the record, you said you wanted to make the decision without unanimous consent. I said I didn't want to decide without the facts. Well, is that what you said to the plaintiff? I said what I said after he said he was going to sue me. You said you were not going to make the decision? That's exactly what I said. So the defendants were lying about what they said? What they said was not true. They made up things that we said. Who said the decision had to be unanimous? The plaintiff was the one who said that, and I said I wouldn't decide then. When you said that, what did the membership say? When I said that, they said it would have to be a unanimous decision. Did you say anything to the membership after they said that? I said the decision should be based on what we said before. And what you said before was what? We said the membership should decide by majority, not unanimous decision. Do you think they agreed when you said that? I don't think they cared what I said. Who said the decision should be a majority? The membership. They said they didn't have to listen to what I said. So, you said you wanted to end the relationship? That's what I said. They said I couldn't quit. What did the president say when you said you would quit? She said that the decision was not mine to make. When you said you would end your relationship with them, what happened? They said they would reconsider if I retracted what I said. And did you agree to retract what you said? I said that I would consider it if they retracted what they said. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's do... is going to be in 15. Okay. All right. Ready? For the record, let's try to work as methodically and as quickly as we can through this. You have said that the testing that you performed with the smoke tube indicated that under conditions obtained on the day of the test, venting was normal and proper. Is that right so far? Essentially, that's true, yes. Was there anything which raises in your mind a possibility that the venting arrangement for the water heater would not function properly under circumstances other than what you found on that day? Well, counsel, that is hard to say. I understand your question, but it doesn't necessarily relate to the accident. That is why I was trying to clarify it for you before. The way the heater is set up in there is not necessarily the way it ought to be, but I don't think it had anything to do with this particular accident. So it's your opinion that the exhaust venting on the water heater at this location has no relationship to the plaintiff's accident. Is that right? In effect, that's correct, yes. Well, you are going to have to help me here by saying, in effect, that's correct. Is that the same as saying that's correct? Again, I am trying to help you out. There is a problem with the way you are asking the question. Okay. Invariably, the size of a room and things like that 
have some effect on the way the gas vapors travel. This particular setup is basically within the range of conditions. There is nothing really abnormal about the set of conditions that were here. I see. That does not mean there is no difference between big rooms and small rooms or ones with more ventilation than others. It simply means there was nothing that was a special contributor to this accident. Now, in my earlier question, I was referring to exhaust ventilation. Are you referring to both the ventilation and combustion of air in that last answer? You can't have one without the other. You can't have an exhaust without an intake. So the answer is yes. Is it your opinion that under the circumstances which you understood existed on the date of the accident, there was sufficient air in the room and properly functioning ventilation for the water heater? What I'm saying is that there was nothing that would cause an unusual condition. It was within the parameters that I would have expected for a normal setup. Smaller rooms, by definition, can have an effect, but there was nothing special about this particular setup. Okay. Is it your opinion that at the time of the accident, the water heater was functioning properly as installed? No, because it wasn't installed in the right place. But in terms of mechanical function, I don't believe there was any malfunction that contributed to this case. Did you see any evidence of the flame rollout phenomenon when you were testing the water heater? No, I did not. We should recognize that sometimes you do get water heaters, particularly under these types of conditions. You will always get a little bit of a flash. Please continue, sir. But it was clear from the condition of the control and the other parts that the heater in this case has never had a significant problem. They appear to be free from melting or any condition like that. You do sometimes get a minor flash, but that is very common with water heaters. Not just water heaters, though. All gas appliances, right? Not all of them, no. Gas water heaters are very specific because of their flu system. If you have cold water in the tank, you reduce the amount of draw, and they are much more susceptible to this condition than other appliances. Okay, did you find evidence that this water heater had ever had any flame rollout? No. From the physical evidence, there is an indication from the plaintiff's testimony that he had witnessed flame on some occasions. This would not surprise me, but these would be very momentary, and I could also tell this from the condition of the heater itself. The phenomenon described by the plaintiff, he described it with the access door to the burner area of the heater in place. Is that right? I believe so. Do you have an opinion about the technical possibility of his account in his deposition? Well, frankly, I didn't try to make an analysis of it. Since you are talking of a lay person giving his description, it may vary somewhat. It wouldn't surprise me that you might see a little bit of flash or at least the light from it under certain conditions. But as to what he actually saw, I don't have any way of knowing that. When did you first begin to study residential water heaters? Well, in terms of a specific assignment dealing with the safety standards for heaters, that would have been in the 70s. However, my first experience with the codes dealing with water heaters and the testing of controls dates back to about 2001. What were you doing with respect to residential water heaters in 2001? I went to work for Northern Illinois Gas Company, which is the fifth largest gas utility in the country. I was a management trainee and went from department to department. Okay. That was five minutes at 190. All right, we're going to do this in 15. Okay. <clears throat> Just before we get started, so here's a couple of preview words that are in this. Uh, Roland Kelly, it's not a take, this is still practice. Mr. Donner, Loma Linda, VA Hospital, Salmon River Community Hospital, Michigan, Miss Meyer. Everybody ready? 
for the record. Doctor, have you ever had your deposition taken before? Yes, I have. On how many occasions? Several. More than 10? Yes. And more than 50? Well, I am not sure about that. Have you given court testimony before? Yes, I have. On how many occasions? Less than 10. Do you feel it necessary for me to go through the customary admonitions and ground rules of a deposition prior to giving testimony? No, I pretty much know them. Just a reminder, I would like to remind you that you are under oath, and that is the same oath as if you were in court giving sworn testimony. Do you understand that? Yes. Eventually, doctor, your medical legal evaluation was transposed on or converted into a letter directed to Roland Kelly. I presume this is what I was given when I asked for the records. Doctor, when you have given court testimony in the past, that has been as an expert witness? Well, I guess you would say that if a patient I treated had some reason they went to court, then that is why I was there. They were patients that I have treated, as I remember. Doctor, currently, how much of your practice is private practice versus providing medical legal evaluation? Probably 99% is private practice. And how long has it been 99% private practice? As long as I can remember. I mean, I don't do this very much. Within the last five years, can you approximate how many medical legal evaluations you have performed? Probably been less than five. Did you say less than five? Yes, less than five. And have you ever performed a medical legal evaluation for Mr. Donner's firm? No, I have not. Within the past five years, do you recall the names of any of the defense attorneys that you have performed medical legal evaluations for? No. Doctor, where is your current private practice? Here at Loma Linda. Do you mean the main Loma Linda facility? Yes. How long have you been working here at Loma Linda? About nine years, I think. Yes, just about nine years. And you are a medical doctor, is that correct? Yes. And do you have a specialty? Orthopedic surgery. Are you board certified in orthopedic surgery? Yes. And how long have you been board certified? It's listed in my CV. I am not sure what the date is. I will check your CV. Thanks. Okay. Do you have any subspecialties in orthopedics? Joint reconstruction. Doctor, are you on the staff of any hospitals as an orthopedic surgeon? Here at Loma Linda. Staff privileges anywhere else? At the VA hospital here in Loma Linda. How long have you had your staff privileges here at Loma Linda? About the same length of time I have been here. How long have you had staff privileges at the VA hospital at Loma Linda? Approximately the same, I think. Have you had any staff privileges at any other hospital since you became a medical doctor? There have been several through training and private practice and so forth, most of them short term. Do you remember the names of those hospitals? Well, let's see. Private practice, it was Salmon River Community Hospital, and there were probably other hospitals there, but I am not sure. Are you licensed to practice medicine in the state of Michigan? Yes. Do you keep that license active? Yes, I do. And are you licensed to practice medicine in any other state? Not currently. Have your staff privileges ever been suspended at any hospital? No. Has your license ever been suspended or revoked in the state of Michigan? No. Doctor, you charge $500 an hour for deposition testimony time, is that correct? That is a departmental standard. Okay, and any hour over an hour is prorated for time spent giving deposition testimony? That's my understanding, yes. Doctor, I brought a check to take care of the deposition time. I don't anticipate it going much over an hour, but it may. Do you have any set billing rate for your time to give testimony at the time of trial? I am sure. Again, there is a departmental protocol, but I don't know what it is. Do you have any idea as to how much the department requires for court testimony? I am not certain. I mean, I heard we talked about it. Whenever I have done it, that, that is what it has been, but I don't know what that number is. In regards to medical legal evaluations, doctor, are you aware of the charges for the examination itself? This is not an area I participated in a lot, so I don't know. I can't really tell you much about that. Okay, you also do medical record reviews along with your examination, is that correct? Right, or any time I am doing it, I mean the medical record review, whether it's industrial cases or these types of cases, medical, legal, and review of cases for depositions are usually all of the records, but not always. Sometimes I will do a portion of the records only. Do you have a billable rate for your medical record reviews? 
Again, you would have to ask somebody else in our department. Doctor, you obviously reviewed medical records in this particular case. Yes, they are not here other than these records. These are probably the ones that I reviewed, but I don't have any particular recollection other than what is here. Can you give me an approximation as to the amount of time you spent reviewing medical records prior to preparing your medical legal evaluation of Ms. Meyer? Again, it's been a couple of years ago, so I don't recall. Are there any documents which would set forth the amount of time you spent reviewing medical records in preparation of the medical legal evaluation report? For clarity's sake, say that again, please. I did not understand. Do you know if there are any billing records or any type of records that would document the amount of time you spent reviewing records in preparation of your medical legal evaluation? I don't know. I remember a considerable length of time with this patient and evaluating the situation, but I don't recall any more than that. Do you have any information as to when you were first contacted? You want to repeat that, please? Withdraw the question. Do you have any recollection as to when you were first contacted in this case? No. Oops. <laughs> time flies. <laughs> That was 200. Yes, that was. We do not have time here. Okay. In fifteen again. <clears throat> okay, so preview words for this warm up Mr. Torres, Mike, Francisco, Moreno, Toyota, Bering Cross Parkway. And that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? <clears throat> For the record. I want to go back to the evening of April 26, about two years ago, and ask you who you were with that evening. In the evening, I was with my two friends. It was Mike and Francisco. Do you know Mike's last name? Moreno. Please spell Moreno for the record. M-O-R-E-N-O. -E Please spell Francisco for the record. F-R-A-N-C-I-S-C-O. Thank you. Showing you people's one for identification. Do you recognize that person? Yes, I do. Who is that? Mike Moreno. At any time that evening, were you in Mike's car? Yes, I was. What kind of car was it? Toyota SUV. What color was it? Black. I have put people's 2A and B up on the board. Do you recognize that car? Yes, I do. Was that Mike's car? Yes. That evening, were all three of you in the car, you and Mike and Francisco? Yes, we were. And where had you been or where were you coming from? First, we were at my mom's house. Without telling us the exact address, what area was it or the street? Somewhere on Bering Cross Parkway. Bering Cross Parkway, correct? Yes. When you left your mother's house, where did the three of you go? We were on our way to my house, but we stopped at some girl's house. Do you know the name of the girl whose house you stopped at? Mary, I think. Was Mike driving at this time? Yes, he was. Was it Mike's idea to stop at Mary's house? It was. Was this close to where your mother lived and where you lived? Yes. What happened when he stopped at Mary's house? He talked to her. Okay, he pulled up front of her house, is that correct? Yes. Did he get out of the car? No, he didn't. Did any of the three of you get out of the car? No, we didn't. Did Mary come over to the car? Yes. How did she know that you were there? Did he honk or call her name? That girl was there. She was standing there in front of her house talking on her cell phone. I see. We're talking about Mary. 
he seen her in front of her house, so he called to her. She was in front of her house? Yes, and then he pulled over. He called her and told her, you know, come to the car, and she walked over. Uh-huh, yes. Is that a yes? Yes, she did. Showing you people's three for identification. Do you recognize who that person is? Yes. Who is that? That girl Mike was talking to. That's Mary? Yes. When she came over to Mike's car, was she standing near the car? She was leaning on the top of the window. The window was rolled down. She was leaning there. Like leaning into the car? Yeah. On which side of the car? On the driver's side. And approximately how long did she talk to Mike? About 10 minutes. Did you know her? No. During that 10 minutes, did you or Francisco or Mike ever get out of the car? No. What happened after 10 minutes? What happened? Well, he just kept talking, you know. They were talking, making plans, you know. They were making plans for us to, you know, meet later on, you know. She was going to bring some friends over, some girlfriends. I'm sorry, they were making plans? Yes, we were going to meet at a later time. On that evening? Yes. And she was going to bring some friends over. Who was going to bring friends over? That girl, Mary. All right. After you left Mary's house, where did you go? To my house. How long were you and Mike and Francisco at your house? Well, we were there a long time. When we were all together, we were there till later in the evening, way later in the evening, just talking and playing video games. Were you there an hour or two hours, if you remember? More than that. A lot more than that. And at some point later in the evening, what happened? Mike chose to go with the girl, so he left. He told you he was going back to Mary's? Yes. Uh-huh. Did you go with him? No, I chose not to go. What about Francisco? He chose not to go, too. So it was your understanding that Mike left to go to Mary's house? That's what he said. Okay. Did you ever see Mike alive again after he left that evening? No. Mr. Torres, as I understand it, you had been to your mom's house with Mr. Moreno and Francisco, correct? Yes. Yes. Now, what time did you leave your mother's house? Approximately like around 9 or so. 9 p.m. in the evening? Yes, the evening. Yes, at night, not morning. What had you been doing up to that point in time during the day? Well, during the day, we were just, you know, just driving around, trying to find something to do. Okay, you and your two friends had been driving around all day, is that right? Yes, well, more or less. Were you looking for girls? No, we were just cruising, you know. Like I said, we went and visited my mom. That's where we were early in the morning, afternoon, evening, whatever. Just driving around, visiting friends. You know, we didn't have anything better to do. You visited your mother early in the morning, too? Yes. No, that was at the point where, you know, before we had left for home. Okay, how much time did you spend at your mother's house? At my mom's house, probably about half an hour, an hour. I don't know. It was quite a bit of time. Were the three of you together yes. the entire time? Yes. The three of you were together the entire day, is that correct? Yes, we were. All right. Did you consume any alcohol during the day? I can't really recall, but it was probably sometime in the evening when we started drinking. Not in the morning, though. Not in the morning. Later in the day, you did begin drinking then? In the evening. Was that before or after you had stopped at Mary's house? That was after, I think. Yeah, that was after. Now, did Mike drive directly from your mother's house to Mary's house? I guess, from what he said on his cell, I don't think it was his intention to go look for her. He just happened to go there. Okay. That was also at 200. We'll do two more little warm up and then we're going to start takes. We're going to do this in 14. Okay. Okay. Ready? Okay. For the record, did you hear the question, ma'am? 
Yes, I did. I can't say what the answer would be. Now, other than the one incident that you mentioned, did you tell Joe to take it easy at any other time? No, he drove fine after that. In other words, the only complaint with regard to his driving that you noticed was the failure to come to a complete stop. Is that correct? That's right. And then accelerating fast enough to make noise on the pavement with the tires, right? Do you mean the accident that happened before this? Yes, but not including the one that resulted in damage to the car and personal injuries, okay? Okay, well, he almost skidded into a parked truck. When did that happen? When he came around that corner, he failed to make the complete stop. Was the car going sideways at that time? It was heading towards the truck. It was skidding. I am asking if the back end of the car was skidding around toward the truck or was the front end heading right toward the truck? I don't know. What was skidding? That must have been the tires. Were the tires spinning or were they skidding from side to side? It was more or less like this. Are you indicating the tires were going back and forth? The car was doing that. The car was going back and forth, right? Yes. Was the back end of the car swinging in a different line than the front tires? It was a different direction than the front, yes. What part of the car came close to a truck? The front part of the car. Was it the front right or the front left side? I'm not positive. What type of truck was it? I don't know. Was it parked? Yes. Which side of the street was it parked on? The truck was on the right-hand side of the street. And on which street was that? It was on Shelby, heading towards I Street. Was it near the corner? Yes, sir. Were there any other parked vehicles between the truck and the corner? I didn't notice if there were or not. Do you remember the color of the truck? No, I don't. Do you know the year of the truck? No. Do you remember if it had a camper on the back? No. Do you remember anything about the truck at all? The only thing I know is that it was a pickup truck. Up until the time of the accident, you indicated his driving was fine, right? Yes. You said you saw this approaching car with its headlights. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. How far away was this car when you first saw it? I would have to guess. I think it was around 100 feet. Now, is that a guess or is that an estimate on your part? That is a guess. Is that 100 feet around a curve or is that 100 feet on the straightaway? That would have to be on the straightaway. When you first saw this car, where was it with respect to the road? From what I could see, I thought it was on our side of the highway. Is there a white line in this section of the road? I believe so. Is this a two-lane road in that part of town? Yes, it is. Was there a midpoint on this particular road? I imagine so. Now, is it in a fact that when you first saw this car, it appeared to be across that midpoint and in the lane in which you were traveling? From where I was sitting, it looked like it was. Now, after you saw the car cross the middle part of the road, how far away was it from Joe's vehicle? Like I said, I would have to guess around a hundred feet. Can you estimate how fast this other car was traveling? I would guess between 45 and 55. Did the two cars collide? No. Can you estimate how much time went by from the time you first saw the car until it passed you in the opposite direction? No, I can't. Was it a brief period of time? I can't say. Now, you indicated you said something to Joe. Is that correct? Yes. What happened then? He pulled the car to the right. Did you go into a skid? The front of the car went off into the gravel, and we started, I could feel the sensation of it, and we started to roll. Do you know how long you were in the gravel before you started to roll? No, I don't. Do you know how many feet you traveled in the gravel? No, I don't. When you and your husband went back to the side a couple days after the accident, were you able to see anything on the pavement to indicate how far you had been off the road? We didn't see anything on the pavement, no.